When Massimiliano Allegri left Juventus in May 2019, he left behind a record-breaking legacy. The manager won the Serie A title in each of his five seasons in charge, achieved four straight League and Cup doubles and reached two Champions League finals, consolidating Juve's place as the top dog of Italian football. But since returning to Turin in 2021, following two years out of a job, the Italian coach has been unable to recapture the magic of his first spell, finishing 16 points adrift of champions Milan last term with the club's worst points tally in over a decade and beginning the new campaign in nightmare form. The Bianconeri have recorded more red cards than wins from their opening nine games in all competitions, ranked 12th in Serie A for expected goals, and have lost the first two games of their Champions League group for the first time in their history. A 1-0 loss to Monza, who were playing in Serie A for the first ever time, had yet to win this season, and had Rafael Palladino taking charge of his first ever senior game as manager, has only compounded this early season misery. Unsurprisingly, the Juve boss is now under serious pressure, with major concerns over his ability to turn the side's form around and match his rivals tactically. Meanwhile, the fact he signed a four-year contract on returning, worth the reported €9 million Euros per year, has led to fears the club simply cannot afford to get rid of him. But has the legendary coach, who just last year was tipped for the Real Madrid job, really fallen behind his peers in the Italian game? On today's EFT Explained, we're going to take a look. So what is the overall damage of Max Allegri's return to Juventus? To assess this, it's worth looking at the record of his predecessors Andrea Pirlo and Maurizio Sarri. Both won silverware for the Bianconeri, with Sarri leading the club to a ninth successive title and Pirlo triumphing in the Coppa Italia, and yet both were sacked after just one year in charge, with an early Champions League exit proving the final straw for Sarri, and Pirlo's inability to retain the title seeing him relieved of his duties a year later. Both coaches had been hired as part of the club's effort to evolve the team's style of play away from the defence-first pragmatism that had defined much of Allegri's first stint, something that had delivered title after title but hadn't been enough to secure glory in Europe. Juve's reappointment of Allegri was an admission that those projects had failed, but not only has the returning manager been unable to improve on the record of Sarri and Pirlo, he's actually made them worse. Though hiring Pirlo, who hadn't even completed his coaching badges when he was first appointed, was a risk, his sole season in charge of Juve was actually very promising. He may have finished fourth on 78 points, but his side scored more and conceded less than Sarri's team the previous season, ranked third in the league for expected goals behind free-scoring Inter and Atalanta sides, and ranked first for expected goals against, proving that the side could remain defensively solid with a more expansive style of play. Allegri's tenure has so far seen the side regress. Last season's total of 70 points was a significant drop-off from Pirlo's efforts, and their underlying stats also looked a lot worse. Their defensive record remained largely the same, but their attack fell off dramatically, ranking 11th in the division for both goals and expected goals, below Sassuolo, Udinese and Hellas Verona, three clubs that between them spent less than Juve on transfers in 2021-22. Of course, the last-minute sale of Cristiano Ronaldo didn't help matters, with his 29 league goals and 26.5 expected goals from 2021, roughly representing the difference between Pirlo and Allegri's attacking record. But given Allegri had Paolo Dybala, Alvaro Morata and Moise Ken at his disposal for the entire season, and Dusan Vlahovic for the second half of it, it's difficult to argue there weren't goals in the team. And the fact he was unable to find a consistent role for Dejan Kulisevsky, who has looked like a superstar in the making once again under Antonio Conte at Tottenham, is another indication that Allegri hasn't been able to maximise the talent in his squad, something previously seen as one of his strong points. And beyond results and player performance, Allegri has also faced criticism for his tactics. And given the club's trophyless 21-22 campaign, the fact the style of play has also got worse has seen fans become impatient. Despite both facing difficulties, Sarri and Pirlo both had a clear vision of the way they wanted the game to be played, and while Juve fans knew what they were getting with Sarri from his time at Napoli, Pirlo made up for his total lack of experience with an impressive ability to quickly implement his ideas. Heavily influenced by Johan Cruyff's total football and Pep Guardiola's positional play, Pirlo's style centred heavily on possession, intense pressing, fluid positional changes and manipulating space. As a result, the transition from Sarri ball was pretty seamless, with the side ranking second in Serie A for possession and fourth for passes per defensive action, the metric used to measure how often a team is attempting to win the ball back off the opposition in the attacking half in both 2019-20 and 2020-21. Allegri, on the other hand, has a far looser managerial style. 
As Ricardo Montalivo, who played under him at Milan, recently told the zone, there are coaches that teach you how to play by memory. You go onto the pitch and you already know what to do. Then there are coaches like Allegri who give you an idea of the general game plan and leave the interpretation of the play to individual players. Allegri even said himself after leaving the club in 2019, in Italy the tactics are all bullshit. Football is art and the artists are the world-class players. All you need to do is put them in the best condition to do well. This clearly worked for him when he inherited an experienced, well-drilled squad from Antonio Conte in the mid-2010s, a time when the majority of Juve's rivals were also well below par both on the pitch and in the transfer market. But fast forward to 2021 when he took over a side that had just missed out on the title for the first time in a decade and was very much in transition and his methods were suddenly not so effective. Serie A has evolved too. While Juve remain the league's biggest spending club, Inter have signed several superstars in recent years, while Milan, Napoli and Fiorentina have all operated very smartly in the market. The league is also far more competitive tactically, with fast, aggressive pressing football becoming increasingly mainstream in the Italian game, thanks to coaches like Giampiero Gasparini, Ivan Juric and Vincenzo Italiano. In comparison, Allegri's Juve look far off it. Last term, they ranked 11th in the league for passes for defensive action and 9th for possession. So far this year, they rank a lowly 16th for passes per defensive action and 12th for possession, seeing just 49% of the ball each game. And it's not just the intensity of the team's pressing that's lacking, but also its effectiveness. With the Bianconeri winning the ball with just over a quarter of their attempted pressures, the worst record in the entire division, while only Roma and Salernitana make fewer pressures in the final third. Of course, pressing isn't the be-all and end-all of modern football, but these numbers make it easy to see why Juve are struggling to control games under Allegri, and the Monza defeat was a case in point. Even before Angel Di Maria sending off in the 40th minute, their underdog opponents were enjoying 56% possession, were completing a higher proportion of their passes, and had outshot them. But while it appears that Allegri has fallen behind the times tactically, he alone cannot be blamed for Juve's current situation, which is the culmination of years of poor strategy. This summer is a good example with the departures of captain Giorgio Chiellini and Matthijs de Ligt compensated by the single signing of Bremer from Torino, leaving Allegri short of options at centre-back, while the acquisition of an injury-prone Paul Pogba and ageing Di Maria are hardly in keeping with the long-term project that the manager signed up to last year. And this is perhaps the most puzzling thing. During a period of financial difficulty in the wake of the global pandemic, the club's decision to hand Allegri a four-year contract after having sacked the previous two managers after just one season is a strange one. When they hired Pirlo a year earlier, he was given a reported salary of just 1.8 million euros, whereas Allegri is earning over four times that. Just as they were getting rid of Aaron Ramsey and Cristiano Ronaldo, players whose huge wages had taken up too much room on the books, as well as failing to renew Paolo Dybala, the decision to hand such a big contract to Allegri, a trusted manager but one who had been out of the game for quite a while, was a big risk. The club is also still searching for a sporting director following the departure of Fabio Paratici to Tottenham last summer. Given he was one of the defining figures of Juve's 2010s dominance, joining the club in 2010 and hiring Antonio Conte a year later, his loss to the Bianconeri cannot be overstated. But equally, his last few years did not match up to his earlier work. Cristian Romero was signed from Genoa only to be sold at a loss to Atalanta, where he quickly earned recognition as one of the best young centre-backs in Europe. Leonardo Spinazzola and Joao Cancelo were both sold in 2019 just as Alexandro's performances were beginning to decline at left-back, and until this summer's signing of Filip Kostic, who has been exclusively used as a winger so far, the left side was almost completely neglected by the club's recruitment team. As a result, Allegri inherited an unbalanced squad in need of rejuvenation, and while some areas have been addressed, there is still a lot of work to be done. It also hasn't helped that Federico Chiesa, who had quickly established himself as a talismanic figure for the side under Pirlo, has been injured for much of his tenure so far. But despite all this, it's difficult to find many positives from Allegri's return to Juventus. Results have gotten worse, as has the style of play, and with Serie A as competitive as it's been in well over a decade, the Italian giants are at serious risk of dropping out of the Champions League spots. A situation that would spell more disaster for the club's finances given they made a reported 73 million euros from featuring in the competition last term. With a number of young, dynamic coaches making a name for themselves in Italy in recent years, Allegri's time at the top may well be up. So that was our take on Max Allegri at Juventus, but do you think he can turn things around? And if not, how long do you think he has left? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like and subscribe to EuroFootball Daily if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.